To be an Easter people, what an amazing thing it is. We think about the transformation that happened after Easter. You have a, essentially a group of individuals who were hiding, who would flee, who wouldn't even sit by Jesus in his greatest hour of need. And all of a sudden they become these bold, incredible, amazing individuals who help change the world. I mean, it's through them and through their what Jesus did in and through them, that all of a sudden we have hospitals, orphanages, the educational system that is meant for all people. Life-changing, I mean, giving charity. I mean, literally, there's the fruits of what came out of the boldness and the transformation that happened as movement are so vast that we take so much of it for granted. But almost all this giving of others Helping others in need, caring for each other, that transformation, those change of hearts happened literally in that moment that took place on Easter Sunday. And it began a revolution that changed and transformed the world and continues to change and transform the world and change and transform lives. Yeah, it's interesting though, is that the number one reason why people are leaving churches. Why people are feeling disengaged or feeling like they can't find a place to come and worship is it's because they're not experiencing transformation. They know they live in a world that is broken and fallen. They know that they have lives that are struggling and difficulties and different challenges. Yet when they're connected to the body, they're not experiencing some of the change and transformation that impacts people's lives. And so these next five weeks, we're really going to be talking about the change and transformation that happened through the life of Peter and how it impacted him, how it changed and transformed him, and how living into this can help us continue to be that life-changing, life-giving congregation that God is calling us to be. And we can understand, can't we, why if all of a sudden somebody comes walking into a church and they're wanting to experience change and transformation, why sometimes that doesn't happen? They come walking in. And as good as my preaching or teaching may be, or as good as the Sunday school may be, we spend a lot of time sometimes teaching people, telling people how to live, how to move, how to act. Let's be honest. Most people, when it comes to losing weight, when it comes to changing how their patterns are, guess what? I know that Big Macs are bad. It doesn't stop me from eating them. Right? Knowledge does not, it is not by itself transforming. And connecting with other individuals Connection is nice, but it is not transforming. There was a study done in Romania, and in the study done in Romania, they found that these kids, they was in, these kids in the orphanages, they found that the group of kids, that their brains were smaller, their bodies were different, were less, they were more health problems, more issues, and so they started studying these two different groups. One group of kids that was healthy, one group of kids that was not. They found that they both had the same educational system. They both had people in, around them in their lives. One, but the one group was being invested in, was through their foster care system, through one-on-one -on -one connectional relationship. And the other group, the other group they found out had a lot of people around them, but no one pouring into them. Change and transformation happens with Jesus being poured into people, through people like you and me. People being poured into one another by being walked with, by being held. And so I want you to watch, we're going to watch a short little clip here. Um, 
And in this clip, it's really about Jesus calling Peter. And in this clip, I want you to look at it and think about what Jesus is really saying and doing with Peter, how he's walking with him, experiencing what his life is before he gives the call. So watch this couple-minute clip of Jesus calling Peter into ministry. Change the world. Such a simple thing to be called into, isn't it? And yet here is Peter, 2,000 years ago. You know, his story is very similar to really 
the same thing that we experience today. His job, actually, you know, he's experienced rejection in his life. Did you know that every little boy in uh, the Jewish culture in the world uh, that they lived in wanted to be a disciple of a religious leader? That's what they grew up. That's what their parents wanted them to be. And they'd go to school and they'd be told to memorize. Memorize huge sections of the Bible. And if they couldn't memorize enough, then they weren't worthy enough to continue going on and through school. And so they'd be sent back to the, their parents and the parents would teach them a trade. Peter was taught a trade. Fishing. Fishing actually was a pretty dang good job in Jesus' day and age. I mean, yes, you were still in poverty. Yes, you still struggled. Yes, if there was drought, famine, difficulties, you could still end up losing your life. But it was really, by most of the world that he lived in, was really a week away from starvation. From going without food, fishermen was maybe two to three weeks. They were about as close to middle class as the Roman Empire allowed. It was a decent job, a good job. And so here it is with Peter that Jesus comes to his day where he didn't catch any fish, and he comes to him. And the first thing that I think is important, that the call of Peter really begins with the fact that really he was willing to make time. And I will admit, just like for our, us, sometimes that time can come reluctantly. Sometimes we're not the ones to give it freely. We're doing it because it's a sense of obligation, a sense of what we should know. In Mark, it lets us know that Peter's mother-in-law was literally healed by Jesus. So he might have felt a sense of obligation that, yeah, maybe I should give up my time to him. But Peter just went the whole night fishing. He didn't catch a thing. And depending on how his fishing experiences were the previous days, it might be and anyone during this day and age might have known as they read this story that really he might have needed to go get another job because he needs to feed his family. There's not banks, savings accounts, credit cards, or anything. If you don't have food for your family, you need to find a way to go get it. Peter might be strapped for time. Not only that, but he is tired. And we know what that's like. Don't we, to be tired? I don't have enough. How can I have anything else to my plate? How can I do any more? How can I give time? One more person, one more thing. The next thing we see with Peter is he had to have a willingness and the ability to have faith that something amazing could happen. You see the nets, the nets at the bottom of the screen right there, they actually the nets 2,000 years ago were kind of similar, actually probably even a little thicker. The thing with these nets is, is that these nets are so thick that during the daylight, when you throw them into the water, that actually you can't catch fish. The fish can see them. That's one of the reasons why they can go fishing at night. One, not only were the fish a little bit more active, but two, the nets worked. Fishermen who had gone out during the day or tried to catch fish during the day knew that it was an impossible feat, that the fish, by the time that you would have the nets down there, the fish would be gone, they would run. They knew that if you were going to catch fish, that you were going to catch them at night. And so what a fisherman was doing is, is he's cleaning these nets so that way they could be, that's what Jesus catches Peter doing. He's in the boat cleaning the nets and all the weeds and all the stuff that gets trapped in this material. When Jesus all of a sudden catches him, and he has to be willing to sit there and say, I'm willing to risk wasting a couple more hours of my day because I know I'm going to have to clean the nets. But I'm willing to trust that if Jesus is going to lead me, that something amazing can happen. It's easy to lose touch with the fact that we live in a world where amazing things can transpire and happen. And that Jesus can be at the heart and soul. That amazing things can take place and happen that can impact and touch people's lives. 
And it impacted much of my life. Your life too. But you also notice something else. What does Jesus offer to Peter? You know what? I tell you what. I like to fish. I like to fish. And you always, every fisherman has the dream, dream catch, right? You fish for walleye, you want to catch the monster. You fish for northern, you want to catch the monster. If you fish for a living, if anyone watches Deadliest Catch or any of those fishing shows, you just want to catch the big, full barrels. You want, you, and you don't, I love all these guys when they sit there, if you watch Deadliest Catch, they have these big things of crap come on board, and they're thinking dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs, dollar signs. So when Peter, all of a sudden Jesus goes and catches the fish and fills his boat with fish, what do you think Peter's thinking? I have just cashed in. I've got security. I've got safety. I might, I might be able to have money for more than just this moment, but maybe for, for weeks to come. Every other fishing, maybe I can actually get a second boat. But then the moment happens. Peter's given up his time. Faith in the amazing. But Jesus asks him one simple thing. And it's really the beginning for each and every one of us in when it comes to change and transformation. It's not about what we know. It's really about who is at the heart of how we know the Lord. Who is at the heart of how we know ourselves. Because really what Jesus offers to Peter is something you could have never anticipated or expected. He's already been rejected, told he's not good enough to be a disciple. And yet Jesus comes and he looks at him and says, Will you follow me? And really what being a disciple is, is that will you learn to be like me? I want you to be doing more than just fishing your boat. I want you to change and transform lives. I want you to know what it's like to have people's lives touched and impacted and moved through you because I know God. I am God and I see in you the ability for you to be like me. That's what Jesus says to Peter. The call and the question is will you know me? Will you know Jesus Christ? Will you know Jesus Christ? Will you take the time, effort, energy? Will you have the faith in that amazing that God is real, that God has died, that God has raised, but most importantly, God's still presence still resides here with us and continues to want to move and desires to be known. I mean, really, the action that we see going on with Jesus is, is that what he did to his other disciples, really when we look at it in the gospel, is that Jesus poured who he was into them. His teaching. The movements, the actions, the miracles. It was to let them know that the kingdom of God is at hand and they could be vessels of that change and transformation in the world. And I love that it's not like, oh, follow me for a week, and by the way, everything will be made perfect. It was a three-year process of continually pouring themselves, having them experience life in every avenue and channel, in every area and facet. There was vulnerability, there was sharing, there was connecting. And it was beautiful and amazing as they rested it into God's grace, as they rested it and laid it to each other. It was the beginning. And transformation, really, at the heart and soul of it, for each and every one of us, it really begins with that call. 
God is real. God is here. Jesus says we well, you know him. No. I want you to know the living God. I want you to know the God of grace. I want you to know the God that led a movement of charity, of sacrifice, of grace. Will you know me? Will you know me? And the most powerful thing that we have is not the knowledge that's up here. The most powerful thing that we have is not the actions that we do here. The most powerful thing that we have is that the presence of God is with and amongst us. And that we, as the body, can let people know it. Let people know it by letting them know that God's love not only resides with us, but that God's love embraces them. Jesus goes to Peter, will you follow? Will you follow this? I know you could live a life of security. You could live a life of, of leisure. But I'm asking you, will you live and be the most loving you that you can be and change the world? Will you be the most loving you that you can be? Because that's all that God asks. That's all that God pours in. And that's all that we as a body continue to grow into continue to pour into as we continue to grow in understanding what it means to connect with Christ, to grow in love, to share and restore the world. And, and for the next few minutes, well, I'm, I'm going to show this, this little video. It just goes through this little question. It goes through the same question over and over again. And it's essentially, will you fall? Will you fall? Because let me tell you, the simple step of following Simple step of following, and it won't go into some of the deeper things as the series goes on. But the simple step of following is just being willing to listen. And so this upcoming week, I just want to encourage and challenge each and every one of us to take time to invest in Christ. To have a, to realize, to trust that God is real, that God is present, and God wants to be known. So God wants to teach. And have us experience that presence. And the reality is, it's just a matter of grabbing that hand and saying, I will follow. I want something to move in my heart this week. And I know that the source of love is reaching down to me, so I will follow. It doesn't oftentimes take much. It just takes literally just being open, saying, God, take this day, it's yours. Teach me something this day. And then seeing where you're going to encounter God. Open up the word. Experience it as God had moved in history. Open up another life. Reach out to somebody in love and care. Serve the most vulnerable. I challenge you this week to look for God, to experience God, to see God, to, just, to realize that just like God reached out to Peter, that that movement of change and transformation in our lives and in the world literally begins by simply reaching back and saying, I'll follow. I will follow. No idea where it's going to lead, but I will follow because I know that you are loved and I know that you have nothing but the most loving venture and experience of the world for me. So, you will be
Son, your Lord and Savior, the God who has risen and come. May we be touched and changed and transformed by God's presence by simply giving of ourselves. <clears throat> Listen, be led, follow love, be real in this world and in and through us, connecting us to each other. So during this time of offering, may it only be a time where we put our gifts into the plate. But may it also be a time when we give up the depths of our lives to God and to each other. Yes, just make the Lord at this time. Let us now join together and let us sing.